All right, well, today we are going to talk about the Civivi Riffle, and I appreciate you guys coming back to talk about that one, mostly because I'm really excited about this. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm Jake from Ohio State, just as my name says, that is who I am and that is where I live. Um, but I was so excited to get a hold of this knife. The overall design immediately appealed to me, uh, but I can tell you that I've always had this little contender in mind, and that was... I said it multiple times, but the Civivi Praxis, personally for me, fit my hand so well and was such a good size and everything else. I had never found a better Civivi than this. So this was a little bit of a battle, I thought, as well. And I think I'm going to do a separate video uh, just based on that because I think these are so closely related. Um, but regardless, so I like the design and then I want to see if I could knock that Praxis off the top for me. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see, right? So, um, I got a couple video or one video I'm going to roll in here, uh, with this guy. This might be, hopefully be a fun one. I was really excited to talk about this. Uh, I got a video to roll in here talking about the kind of intermixings of all this, which is pretty cool. And, um, you know, it's just some fun stuff. So let's get those boring specs out of the way. Uh, $55 about everywhere you look, if you can find it in stock right now, it's brand new. Uh, and I think that there's a reason why it's so sold out. I don't know if I've seen a bad review of it. And, and I completely agree with it. Civivi in general, you know, I don't have a problem saying this because they don't, they don't watch my videos, but the, I've said it before multiple times, I fell asleep on, on Civivi. And what I mean by that was not that they're a sleeper thing, but they were just snoozers to me. The last several knives they put out were all so similar and just very boring and kind of stale. And then they came out with their new line and this along with the, the keen natter and the brazen look i'm the brazen's okay riffles sounds like it was a bad translation but the keen natter I've, can we all agree these names are a little silly but i guess you know what if you make a knife and you sell it and it's this good you, I, you can call it whatever you want you know um so that's kind of cool but the, anyways they sort of woke up i think they really woke uh us up as the masses as a community uh, and we've seen a lot of these reviews lately about this one, the Brazen and the Keen Natter. So, so good job um, to Civivi for that. So 55 bucks for this guy, eight inches overall, which no, you know, that, that makes it perfect for the Gorilla Paws. I can get a full grip on there. And because again, one of the, another thing I love, this is perfectly, it's the same, you know, thickness all the way back through here and it just sort of tapers off. This isn't any type of sharp point. So you can kind of just spread your fingers out. I can even sort of you know, turn it a little bit and allow my fingers to float off. No bunched up fingers. That makes the Gorilla Paws nice and happy. Uh, so I enjoy that. The weight on it is only 3.4 ounces. They have done a ton and you'll see in a little bit when I roll on that video. Everything about this is milled out inside of here. Tons of weight relief cut in on both scales. Uh, so nice and light for that. Blade steel. Blade steel is really cool. 14C28N, which I do love. Uh, I think that's one of the best budget steels out there. I would love to see people... I like CV, I, I've always given them that credit that they bounce back and forth. They try to mix it up a little bit. We get some 9CR18, these 14C28Ns. Uh, I think they've done 12C27 or whatever that one is as well. Uh, but I give them credit for not just sticking to one, uh, you know, D2 or whatever that may be. Uh, and I know they did that for a little while as well. But uh, very cool of them to kind of mix that up. Micarta on here. So I'm going to talk about this Micarta a bit as well that it's something i'm a little newer to but realizing and i don't really know why but i mean you know g10 g10 is g10 whatever it feels all the same to me uh a little some of them feel a little chalky sometimes but like frn all feels the same and gfn all feels the same to me but my carta can be quite drastically different uh so i think this is the way that it should be and this is it's almost it feels like it's durable like it is g10 but, you know, you still get that fun, uh, all those different colors from the woven fibers. I think that's super, super cool. Um, and, of course, this is going to pick up, you know, kind of the oils from my hand and sort of change colors. So I think that's neat. You can also feel that texturing inside of there when you kind of rub, rub your hands across it. So it gives you a little bit of grippiness. Um, so I think this is what, what you know, my Carta has done correct. That's, that's what it seems like. This also, this is a QSP Hawk. Shout out to Brad over at Mild Manor DDC for suggesting this to me because I absolutely love this knife. But this, these two feel the same. So if you have this, the same kind of concept where you can feel it, it feels very durable, almost like it's plastic, but you can feel those fibers in there. Um, and I think that's cool. This one, again, this is a, a um, Kaiser Doman. 
And uh, that's my boy Rob did a good trade with me and I got a hold of this. Thanks, buddy. Uh, but same thing. This is a this is a really good micarta. I think this is what it's supposed to feel like. You know, it's it's just feels nice. And I guess what I'm saying is I I I had a feldspar and I I had I got the D2 um, scales. So if you have a D2 and you have that micarta, um, those micarta scales on there, every time I feel and this is probably this is gonna be a country reference and I get it, but we always had these caterpillars out there that everybody's called woolly bears. And they look like this. Um, but that's exactly what that micarta felt like and reminded me of. It was it was soft and fuzzy and it was squishy, you know, even though they had liners underneath of them. But that's what that felt like. And I, you know, I think that might maybe is because they were too thin. I don't think that's particularly, and again, I know there's different micarta. There's, you know, li linen and woven and so on. Um, but regardless, I think they did it. I think this is the right choice for it. Um, so anyways, that just kind of gives you a reference of what it's like ball bearing in, in the pivot system, which is cool. Um, mine's a little more stiff. I kind of have that tighten that pivot tighten up. I can go back and loosen it up. Um, I got some oil in there after the video of uh, me taking it apart, but it, regardless the, the, the deployment on this thing and the action on the thing is just so nice. It's so smooth. You know, ball bearings are the way to go. Um, when you want something like that. And, I, and I'm not saying some companies like this, Kaiser, they, they do it right too. And this is phosphor bronze, um, but it just feels so nice. It's, it's, a, it's a great deployment system. So speaking of that, how can we deploy this thing? Well, again, another thing that I absolutely love. And you guys, I've said so many times that, um, you know, I like the silhouette of a knife and that is pretty clean, you know, except for that little tiny flipper tab. And that's why I don't mind it at all. They were able to keep that flipper tab nice and small which is again, a, a, a good credit to what's inside of here. Um, and so they kept that flipper tab nice and small inside of there. So I don't mind it, but it's still really, really functional, you know? And, and I love the fact that it's, it's got the hole through it. So that's just kind of another little aesthetic thing I think looks cool. Plenty of jimping all the way around it. So it, it works perfectly fine. You know, you can flick it, you can push button, whatever you want to call it. You can do all that stuff with it. Obviously, this main large slot up here works really, really well. You can do, you know, the spidey flick on it very, very easily. You can slow roll it. I don't know. You can't really thumb. I don't know. Maybe somebody can somewhere, but I can't really thumb flick it out. You know, like if I get it, if I break the lock and then kind of do something like that, maybe. But it's it's not really that easy to do that. I don't know. You can maybe you can sort of give it that push. Nah, not really. Uh, but regardless, look. The, the two easy, you can do that. You can slow roll it and that works terrifically. Uh, and I don't mind doing that because I'm, I'm a 40 year old dad. So I like to slow roll my knife sometime. Um, and then just the backside, the standard spidey flick works really well. And it puts your finger almost in the right spot. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the inside of this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and roll that footage in now because I think it was really, really cool. So let's check that portion out as well. Okay. So this kind of gets cooler and cooler to me as I, Think about this a little more. I've had it torn apart and actually been sitting here messing with it for 20 minutes or something or whatever before I started rolling again. This, uh, well, kind of standard stuff, right? So here's the the bearings. Uh, those are just standard captured bearings, you know, um, ceramic bearings. So that's kind of standard inside of here. They sit inside of the, the little race uh, inside of the blade. It's That's inset in the blade, so it sits nice and flush. But this is where it's different. So you can see already what they've done is put the stop pin. And I, I know this is not new or anything. It's just sort of new to me. I've seen it on other knives, but I've never owned one and been able to tear it apart and talk about it. So they put that stop pin and you can see it's a different seal and stuff as well. So I'm sure this was a hole and then they just smushed it and, you know, put it through here and then smushed it. And you can even kind of tell. Hold it real still, there you go. Uh, so one side sticks out farther than the other side does. So I'm sure that this side, which doesn't have any marks on it, probably went through and then they, you know, kind of peened that side down, smushed it down. In fact, if I can hold it in the right light here. There's little marks, oh, there you go, perfect. You can see the little marks on that. So, you know, probably went in through this side and then they just smushed it and clipped it off. And it doesn't go anywhere. This that pin's not coming out of there. So then, if we hold this up, you can see the two spots here, 
in here. And that's sort of the travel point of that pin. You notice, you know what I mean? You can see it on that side. So it stops and hits that. Oh, I'll do it this way, do it a little better. There you go. So it stops and hits that. And then this is the liner lock side, but when the lock's depressed, it'll stop and hit that side. All right, now the thing is, I thought about this for a little bit. I thought, well, why, why bother doing that? You know, uh, this this style. This is a Civivi Praxis, but many many knives use this, where they have a stop pin that's just a pin, and it's nested inside of these two liners. Then I realized, as soon as I looked at this, I realized what advantage this has over that. And it's not. I don't think it has anything to do with strength or durability. I think this is perfectly fine, and this is perfectly fine for that. But you know, so when they design this, they have to make this flipper tab so that first it has to be long enough that it has a notch for catching it this side. And then obviously in the back of the blade, it has to have a notch in the back of the blade for catching it here as well. Now I think a main upgrade to this, or I guess variation um, to, to doing it this way, is that flipper tab. They can now keep this flipper tab nice and small as possible and close to the body as possible. I'm gonna nest under there. there you go. And as close to the body as possible because they don't have to overcompensate for that pin sticking out. So then you again get this super nice little stubby flipper that I really like. So I think that's really cool, you know. Um, I, again, it took me a little bit to kind of figure out why. Now, granted, someone else can tell me if there's some other structural integrity to doing it this way. I don't really think so. I don't really see the the difference, you know, your impact is still the same. That when it when we flip it open and then if we're putting any pressure on it, that pin's just gonna rest and hit inside of there. I don't really see that as being a different impact zone or different impact whatever in general, I guess. I don't think that's gonna be a bit bit different. But I do like the idea that because they don't have to overcompensate for a, a pin sticking here and then make this, you know, that this would have had to have a large notch in it here as well, which would have made the flipper tag stick out a little bit farther. But because they didn't do that, all that stuff was, was able to stay nice and neat and trim. So I think that's really cool. Um, so that's it. That's the inside of this. Let me put this back together and then we'll talk some more. Cool. All right. Very cool. So, uh, some really, really good highlights inside of there. You know, I look overall, I don't think I have a bad thing to say about this knife. You know, I, it's, it's just very, very cool. I think it's a really terrific design, very functional, very comfortable, you know, ergonomics on it, I think are terrific. They have everything all the way around here. You can see they got it all nice and chamfered off. There's no hot spots, the pocket clip, not recessed into the micarta. I don't care about that though. The screws are recessed. So, I mean, they just did a ton of right things with this knife. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll stop, you know, blubbering about this thing. We'll lay out some comparisons. Uh, a couple I had in mind, kind of in the same class, the Benchmade Bug Out, which is a little bit smaller, but you know, it can still, this will handle a little more, I think, but it kind of traverses that as well, that everyday carry, um, uh, what am I trying to, category, I think of the word. This is the, uh, the I just got this guy in as well. I haven't even talked about it too much. That is almost a really, really good matchup, to be honest. Um, so this is the Kaiser Beg Lighter. This is the Blade HQ one with M390. Um, but regardless, as far as your your lengths go, that's pretty close. And yeah, look at that. That's honestly, it's not too too different. You know, you can see that the that the Civivi is a little bit thicker, but not too much. Uh, so no wonder I like this knife so much as well because I like this one. And um, let's see what else. Yeah, the practice. We'll put the practice out here, and then we'll end this thing. Um, there you go. So that's about as much as I'm going to talk about the Praxis versus the uh, the Riffle because I think it's uh, that deserves a video on its own, but we'll put that, side, that out there as well. So there you guys go. Look, it is Friday here in Ohio. <laughs> here in Ohio, as if it's not Friday somewhere else. That's funny. Um, what a fool. Just go out and enjoy yourself, man. Make somebody else laugh because I make myself laugh, I guess. All right, take care.